There, last elevator lamination is in place. Okay, due to the fact that I left my other camera, video camera, on the nose of my airplane out at the hangar, it's be nice and cold tomorrow. I using my little still camera. So what I've got done is I run into a predicament. It looks like I gotta make a cut here and remove this because I'm not getting much rudder through. Um, it says in the plans you can make alterations in the shape as long as you get the same surface area um, which I did actually I came out luckily this is extra this is where kind of sort of should be and you can see maybe this line here is where the outline of the squarish type elevator would have been I never would have made those bends that well that sharp I should say so I made a round as you can see there's this section here is not there but we make up for it here and then I notice I had a little extra surface area which is uh, probably not recommended but between here and here doesn't look it just to look at it because this would actually be cut off a little less but when I used to uh, traced it out and folded it up to fit in here they're pretty much the same so I'm ending up with the same area which is kind of good this would have been a little bit extra and I'm gonna have to so I'll have to cut her off here and sand down the glue and what I'll do is I'll snip it off long here and um, put a uh, three quarter inch I think I'll laminate again just to it's probably stronger and I'll just come in here better I'll use a solid piece and that'll give me Right now I got a roughly 20 degrees, so that'll give me a little over 30, 35. But uh, took quite a chunk of throw off the rudder. So beginner's brain fart. She's coming along. What I'm going to do now is get the rotor out. And I've already done the other side. Turned out perfect after doing a bunch of tests on a piece of three quarter inch uh, plywood make sure I kind of knew what I was getting myself into and I'll round this off this is three quarters thick and that's a three sixteenths bit or no that's five sixteenths bit yeah. five sixteenths more like it and uh, it's just right Leaves an eighth of an inch in the center. I'll finish it off with some sandpaper. This one. <laughs> finish it off with some sandpaper and we'll be good to go. I may need extra work for myself here. Oh well. Now I know. When I do go around it with the rotor, I got this three quarter inch piece of wood to keep this thing stable. Tried it on the other side, worked great. So I got my corner block made and I decided to make this one a little bigger. So I'm adding this, glue that in, everything's fit just right. I put one of these blocks here to guide my sanding rail to get this perfect. So all this lines up now, got everything fitting pretty damn good and I decide I'm also going to put that on so it'll just butt down here because I am going to router this round 
so I'll give it a little extra so I'm not chewing too much off here. Most of the wood will come off the strip, which is what I want, 20 by 1 inch. And it also will overlap this joint, so making it a little bit stronger. So I got your red corner block, this butt joint here, which has got a nice taper, so it's damn near a scarf. Plus this overlap here, which again I'll buzz a lot of that off when I do the when I round her off the rotor. And of course this um, thus it will go on top of that. Okay, get the elevator fix up done here. see that's a really strong joint there yep so now I got about 35 degrees throw on the rudder so a little dilemma is over same as the other side or the stabilizer I should say stapled all the plywood pieces in, flipped her upside down, this is all dry now obviously, and you can see how that glue makes a real nice joint there, put these round ball away, yeah. and this wood tends to suck up the epoxy for even quite a while afterwards, so, one thing I do notice is in some areas, it'll keep sucking it up, but because you got this extra here, and I love the same on the ed edge on the other side, it pulls on it. But yeah, I've got this nice joint here again, because it was upside down, everything stays put in the corners. A little extra here, wood, allows it to... Uh, Kept the camera on it would help the uh, joint be nice and strong. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, beautiful. I'll flip her around. All right, you can see I got everything stapled down there while it was drying. What I do once I staple it down. I put her up and I squeeze the uh, ply. So I'll go along and I'll just give it a squeeze. And if I see any glue pucking in and out, I'll throw an extra staple in that area to have it down reasonably tight. Avoid any big honking gaps. And the other thing I did, like I mentioned I was going to do before, I always taper these before I glue it on, rather than trying to sand that taper in after it's, it's down, especially at the these joints. She's two inches wide, so it's like a good uh, gusset strength on these joints. So a quick peek at what I do before I glue these pieces in. I'll mark top and bottom and I'll trace out the area so I know where to put the uh, resin when I do the pre-coat instead of swapping it all over the place and uh, that, uh, give that a coat and then I'll give the leading edge a coat there, our first side's all sanded up. And one side left to go. And the horizontal stabilizer elevator will be all finished, other than the engine. Oh, 
finished. Gussets are sanded down. That uh, glue just incredible stuff to sand. So I'll get the vacuum out and suck up all the sanding dust. And she is finished. Vertical fin and rudder next. <laughs>